Hello, and thanks for watching Garage Time this week. This week, I was a little bit torn as to which project I wanted to work on. So a big part of me wants to fabricate those custom bumperettes, kind of continuing where I left off last week. Last week, we fabricated and fixed this license plate panel, and I really want to do those bumperettes. But the bigger and probably more important project is to tackle these flares on the back. I need to get the flares on the car so then I could recontour this bumper and just finish the bumpers up for, for good. Garage time. Okay guys, I know the decision to cut this car up and put bigger flares on the back is probably not a popular decision. You know, a lot of people like these narrow bodied cars and, and I do too. But the truth is, I already have a narrow-bodied car, which I'll share with you guys on a future video. And I like the performance. I mean, having the wider tires on the back and for what I wanna use this car for, it's, it's really meant for the track. And so if I could afford an engine that had the power of a turbo, then I would probably put turbo flares. So number one is the performance. Number two, secondary, is, is the looks. And, um, and number three is the other side is not pristine anyhow. I need to take the paint and undercoating off the other side just to fix some dents on that side anyways. So to me, RS flares are the way to go. All right, these flares are not RS flares. So you also have to keep in mind, this is a budget build, right? So the cheapest thing to do would be to leave it alone. But as I said, I don't wanna do that. I wanna have the performance of the later series and these are from an SC. So the difference between the Carrera flares and the SC flares is pretty minor. So my challenge on a budget um, is to take these flares, which I paid $100 for, both left and right, and that was shipped, um, shipped via Greyhound. I haven't even opened these yet. I'm going to do it right now. Um, the challenge with these is to reshape these into the exact replica of the Carrera flares. And I just like the look of those a little bit better. Not that they're gonna perform any better, but it, it gives it um, a little bit more rounder look on the back, a little taller profile at the top. Here are the parts I got in the mail and um, after looking at these, these are not what I ordered or not what I wanted at least. These are the exact same parts that are already on this car. Okay, so this is clamped to here onto the car and it's, uh, you know, it's fitting, it's fitting tight. Everywhere you look, this is no different than what's already on the car. There's a little space right here, but I think it's just because the way it uh, isn't fitting all the way down. Interestingly enough, there's no torsion bar hole here. Okay, so as I was saying, we're gonna work on the bumperettes this week. Sorry about that intro. I know it's confusing, but I have no choice. Those fenders are the wrong fenders. They're what I already have on the car, which is not gonna do me any good. So plan B is to um, finish these bumperettes. And what I hope to do here is create something a little smaller and a little shorter. So I was looking at um, some Singer cars and they do the same thing. So um, their bumperettes come like this and then they dive in right here and they sort of blend in with this feature in the bumper. So that's what I wanna do, not to exactly copy Singer, but I think they do look better. Um, Singers are the full width. I'm gonna to try to maybe make mine just a little bit narrower too and also have a little bit more curve to them, um, hopefully. That's the plan anyways. I'm gonna get started a little different than I did before. Usually I, I make some cardboard templates and then I scan them in the computer and then I cut them out um, that way. But this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some quick measurements, I'm gonna draw them in the computer, print them out, cut them, see if I like the shape, and then I already have the files in the computer. That way there it makes it easier to do the CNC cutout of uh, the shapes. Okay, one of, the, one of the most important dimensions is this height from the deck lid down to this ridge, which is where I want the total length of the bumperette to be. Now this bumper could get shifted down and this license plate could get shifted down because of some gas getting underneath there. So I'm gonna take the total measurement and then I'll subtract a little bit and then as these get 
shifted down due to the gasket, I think it'll have the right clearance here. So I need to, you know, guess a little bit, but um, that's just part of, of, of making stuff from scratch. You got to just guess and get it done. Just do something. And the angle of the deck lid where it's, you know, just about tangent to the end here is it's about 65. All right, here's a couple quick notes. I'm going to, this is pretty messy, but I'm going to take it to the computer right now before I forget what all these mean and try to sketch something out and then just overlay it on the car and make sure it's in, you know, kind of the rough shape that I want. Okay, here's the iteration one. And, you know, some parts are good and some parts are way off. So this angle here is, is good, but it's just sticking out way too far here. So this needs to be, this needs to be brought in to be more in line with this. We don't want it sticking out more than, you know, this far. So it lines up well with the license panel, lines up well with the deck lid. Just have to reshape all that. All right, I think I have a template here that's working um, a little bit better. So I have this fitting up against the license panel. This is flush. And then there's about a 10 millimeter um, distance from the, the bumper to the bumperette. So it's poking out 10 millimeters and it's, it, 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 it cuts in, you know, right here at this body line. I have it taped in place so I can hold the camera and show what's going on. So underneath here, it cuts in with the body line right about there. And then it comes up, it stands proud here. This is maybe a little more than 10 millimeters. I might reduce it a tad, but that's kind of the look I was after. It's kind of like a teardrop and um, you know, it follows the shape of the deck lid kind of all the way down and just sort of blends in with the bumper. You can see I put the tail light in too, just to get another visual of how all these pieces will line up and get an idea of the shape there too. So this is pretty much exactly like the Singer one. To be a little different, I considered changing the, the shape a little bit. So potentially um, coming down, continuing this curve and tucking it in a little bit and then pulling it back out. So I thought about maybe, maybe doing this. Um, so I'm gonna do another, another template with an even smaller bumperette, but uh, I'm not so sure that's gonna look okay. So this is the alternative concept for the bumperette. So this shape has a inverse kind of curve to it. And I'm not sure I like it, but uh, you know, it is, it is a smaller bumperette and it has the portion here, which would actually serve as a bumperette would be, you know, matching the bumper a little bit more. This is, I thought of this because of some of the earlier Porsche overrider shapes on like the 356, the A. That gave me the idea for this. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit different. I'm not sure it's the one I'm gonna go with, but uh, it's kind of fun to sort of think of these different shapes. Um, it wouldn't be too much extra work just to cut this out. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll make both and, and try them out. But I'm really, at this point, I'm favoring the, the previous one where it's just a continuous kind of you know, curve this way. But uh, once again, just trying to be a little different. Um, I, I don't want to stray too far from the Porsche design. Just want to make them just slightly smaller and uh, definitely look cool. But uh, you guys can leave a comment below what you think of this design. All right, I have both inner and outer templates designed and sort of taped in place. So you're looking at sort of a paper, paper bumperette. They're not sitting exactly parallel, so I have to kind of hold it like it is. But that's, um, that's my first uh, priority design. Um, it's, it is slightly different than the Singer design, um, only in that it's a little bit narrower and it sits on top of this body line. So this is paint, will be painted and this bumperette's gonna be sitting on, on, on top of this in the license plate panel. 
So I like this, uh, this feature, the way it blends in at the bottom with a nice curve. Um, I want that to be painted and then I want this to be the aluminum color, um, polished aluminum, and then it's just gonna be just slightly narrower. Now this template on the inside is slightly different than the template on the outside, mostly because I wanted to follow the deck lid, but as it comes along here, it's, it, it gets a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller in closer to the body. So this is a little bit more parallel to the, to the back. So anyhow, um, let me show you on the computer what it will look like when it's cut out. All right, I'm at my desk and I'm working on the 3D model of what this bumperette's gonna look like. I've made both sides and I just, for fun, put it into 3D so I can look at the radiuses and look how it's gonna look from the top. So here's the profiles, I can rotate it around. You can see that I put some, a radius on both sides here along the front. And then the interesting thing on this is from the top, this is the top, it's gonna sit on the car like this. So the license plate panel is curved um, along the back of the car. And then this edge here will follow the line of the deck lid. It's also a curved shape. And then it flattens out just a little bit here on the, um, where the bumper is. So it's not contacting the bumper on like an angle. So it's a little bit twisted looking from the top view. I hope this looks okay in, in real life. Um, once this is kind of rounded and polished, I don't know that the curve is gonna be, or the twist is gonna be that obvious. But I wanted just to get a visual of it here on my computer. Um, you can see that there's a difference between this horizontal line and then this is angled in. And it's only a few millimeters, but once again, it is twisted. My goal, it was to make this bumperette you know, fit as tight as possible, make it as small as possible. So by bringing this edge in just a little bit, it shrinks the, uh, the length, and it also, I think, matches the bumper contour a little bit better. But uh, time will tell. When it's on the car, we shall see. And then on this side of my screen, this is a Singer. So you can see their bumperettes are much shorter. You know, they stop where mine are, right there on the, on the, the body line. But these are the full width, so these go outside of the bosses on the license plate panel, whereas mine are going to be narrower and they're going to go on top of the boss. So it'll be a little bit of a different look, but pretty similar to this uh, Singer style. Okay, you just saw these parts get cut out on the CNC machine, and it really does quick work on these things. The only thing left to do, there um, are some tabs that you saw were left there intentionally to sort of hold the part in place as it finishes the machining. So I'm just gonna file those off real quick. I was gonna show you the difference between the inside and the outside pieces. So there is a slight overlap here um, where you know, it's, it's about three or four millimeters that this is offset. And that's to correct for the angle of the bumperette as it goes around the, the curvature of the bumper. Okay, 
Okay, here's a view of the you know, aluminum parts you know, taped to the license panel, just like the paper templates were. So just checking the overall fit, and uh, it looks really good. So from, from this side, you know, we have the continuation of the deck lid shape. It fits tied up against the license plate panel. Um, the offsets seem to be pretty good. From the top view, you know, looking down, you can see how it kind of follows the, the contour of the bumper. And then from this view, you can get an idea of how, how it's shaped. Okay, so the next major step is to weld all this together. And so I've cut a, just a, a strip of aluminum and here are the sides. And the idea is to, you know, tack these in place and then roll it around the edge as it goes to around to the bottom of the bumperette. But before I can just wrap this around there, remember I wanted to create a pretty strong uh, radius on these end plates. So I need to come up with a method to, you know, roll these edges over and um, weld them along that edge so it has a softer radius. If I was just to weld it square and then grind it flat, this is only eighth inch thick. And so I'm likely to just grind through the aluminum and have nothing left to uh, roll the edge. All right, I gotta end it right here. Unfortunately, this week didn't go as well as I had planned. I had the snafu with the fender. Um, then I just, bottom line, didn't have as many hours this week to work on car stuff. And the CNC machine, even though it's super cool, uh, it took a little time to get on the machine. The guy who was using it before me just kept breaking bits and was having trouble. So um, a lot of time was spent just watching someone else use the machine. I probably could have cut these out with a bandsaw or something else, but uh, the CNC machine is super cool. So I hope you guys like it. Please subscribe to the channel, leave some comments below, and we will see you next week when we bend these over and weld it all together. Take care.